Julia. I'm a speaker, a coach, and an entrepreneur, and I'm here with the beautiful Lisa Nichols, and we are in Ibiza right now. Right, I'm Lisa Nichols, CEO of Motivating the Masses, and author of several books. Here's one of those. And I have the pleasure of being with one of the most phenomenal women that I've met in a long time. Instantly fell in love we did. <laughs> with this woman. It was a way beyond a girl crush. Right. You know, because you can have a girl crush on someone because they just appear powerful but when you soulfully feel someone. And I think that happened instantly. It was absolutely instant. Yeah. It, it really was. And and such a beautiful moment where I remember we connected and it was just like, ah, we speak the same language. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. We, we get this. I found my sister. You <laughs> right. sister from another mister. <laughs> right. right. Which is interesting in a world where so many people would see us as opposites in absolutely. so many ways. Absolutely. Right? Um, culture, geographical origin, right. age, uh -huh. you know, I think in a time where we try, we try to find reasons to be different, all we need to do is find those common denominators and all of our differences right. will be honored, right. right? They don't need to disappear, honor them, right. but man, the likeness, the likeness of who we are, and I think that's mm -hmm. what we fell into, and um, we decided, so we're going to play together. We're gonna do something together. Right. Something we're, big. Right, something obviously. big, something ginormous. <laughs> uh, we're gonna serve side by side mm. and we'll figure out what later. Right. Exactly. And um, and we're figuring out that what now. Like we I'm are figuring so excited. Out. Yeah, and we were sitting here having an amazing conversation and then we said, you know what, we really should share this with the world. Yes. It's kind of selfish yes. <laughs> to keep some yes. of these nuggets to ourselves, yes. Yes. right? So we're sitting on the deck uh, of uh, our, my suite here in Ibiza, Spain. Uh, I think this is a place where dreamers come to dream, mm -hmm. uh, creators come to create. Uh, you get a little bit of sleep in between that. A little bit. A little bit, just <laughs> a little bit. Uh, we come to dance, right. celebrate our freedom. Right. Uh, and inside of that space of dreaming and creating and dancing and celebrating, uh, we began to talk about the superwoman, the super shiro. Right. And there's so many different facets to that, but it's interesting actually when we connected, something hit me the other day when I was thinking about that, and I think there's so many women out there in particular that are in competition with each other, yes. and they see someone powerful and immediately it highlights their insecurities and yes. they shrink. And I think what's interesting and definitely what attracted us to each other is that we don't tolerate that, and right. we're all about lifting other women right. up and right. seeing their greatness and right. knowing that we can all shine together, right? right? right. And then recognizing if you don't, see yourself in competition you may recognize the word comparison mm -hmm. because so often we're consciously or unconsciously comparing ourselves to one another and I always say you love what you have until you look left or right, right. and compare yourself <laughs> to the next person the next woman and so in a space where we can recognize I'm whole and complete mm. I'm whole and complete in my imperfection, right. by the way. Exactly. Because there's someone who's going to have tighter abs, <laughs> right. a higher butt, you know, stronger arms, triceps exactly. or biceps, you know, a bigger bank account. Right. But when you can look and see a sister friend mm. and see her in her wholeness, right. amazing, and then still own your amazingness. Exactly. And it starts there. It yes. starts there, right? It's yes. like you can't go into that vibration unless you are so centered in you yes. and it's you know, if you've learned how to do you and love you, and I love, you spoke about this on stage the yes. other day, right? Talking yes. about self-love yes. and, and the journey, your own journey, right? Yes. And really falling in love with Lisa. Yes, and that no one can do you better than you. I mean, it was a, it was a really long journey. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you saying that for me to get there. Um, I'm not sure what your journey was like, but my journey um, was riddled with things that didn't say, mm -hmm. I was powerful, I was enough, mm -hmm. I was beautiful enough, you know? Um, you know, coming from my background, you know, walking in this image with chocolate mocha skin and right. full lips and always had round hips, right. you know, and kinky hair, um, I questioned, was I enough? And then mm -hmm. to top that with, or side by side that with the fact that I had learning challenges, mm -hmm. that I, I, I questioned, was I enough? And so everyone that I looked at, was better than me, right. smarter than me, prettier than me. Mm -hmm. Their family seemed far more perfect than right. mine. <laughs> you know, at least when they walked out the front door, <laughs> everything looked great. Right. And so I, I always felt as if there was something about me mm. that wasn't enough. Mm. And um, I also said on stage, uh, 
when people compliment me, oh my God, you're, you're just so solid and you're so right. secure. I said the longest journey I've ever taken yeah. was the journey back to me. Yeah, and it's interesting as well, Lisa, because I know for me it's been different elements, but a yeah. similar journey of yeah. really falling in love with myself. But I often have people come up to me and say, wow, Regan, you know, you're so confident, you're so powerful, you're so this, you're so that, you're so lucky. And I say, why am I lucky? And they say, well, you know, I have so much fear and I have so much self-doubt, like you don't battle with that anymore. And I was like, excuse me, I'm still a human, right? right. I'm not a robot. And right. I think so many people are searching uh, to be this, you know, perfect human that doesn't feel and that right. doesn't doubt themselves. And mm -hmm. I'm interested to hear how it is for you because I know right before I get on stage sometimes I feel them. I'm like, oh man, is this, do I have enough? And do I have this yeah. and do I have that? Yeah. And it's a constant evolution of doing the work and, yeah. and grounding and choosing right. to love yourself every day, right. right? I think, you know, I appreciate that because I think we have this illusion that I'll arrive somewhere and it'll all be wonderful and perfect. Right. The word perfect doesn't exist in humanity. Mm, yeah. Like, it's it's not about ever being perfect. You don't ever have to pursue perfect. Mm. Pursue falling in love with your imperfection. Right. When I fell in love with my imperfection, mm. Regan, that's when all of a sudden I took my first deep breath. Right. I was like, oh, okay. It's wait, okay. <laughs> hold on. Uh, let, mm. let me fall in love with, with, with the who I am and the who I choose to be. Right. Um, when I can embrace my fear, I'm never going to outrun my fear. Right. That little thing you feel in your stomach yeah. right before you go on stage, that's so human. Right. That's so freaking normal right. because it reminds you, wait a minute, I care. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I don't know it all. Right. Wait a minute, it does matter if they like me. Exactly. Wait a minute, all, it, your humanity shows up. Right. And if you can just handle, check, and manage your humanity. Right. You know, I can be righteous. I can be stubborn. I can be, you know, relentless. I can get defensive. I can get all the things that I know about me. The best thing you could do is know who shows up when you show up. Right. And then manage her. Right. Because she is a handful. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so when you get that, you kind of sit inside of, oh, now inside of this woman, how can I be the absolute best version of her today? Right. How can I not beat her up? How can I unlace the gloves today? Yeah. Sit the gloves down mm. and not beat her up for the, the decision she's made, the mistake she's made. Right. Like, people say, my God, Lisa, your life is unrecognizable. I go, you're right. Mm. It is. But it's a culmination, Regan of the great decisions I made, and my life, as beautiful as it is, is full of, is a culmination of all the mistakes I made as well. Right. I could not be here, sitting, sitting on this amazing deck in this amazing breathtaking place, yeah. which most people have never even heard of, exactly. but it's been, had I not had a combination of both, mm. the great decisions and the great lessons learned. Right. AKA hashtag mistakes. That's what we right. call mistakes. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, I've decided to rename my mistakes <laughs> to great expensive lessons learned. Perfect. Some cost me money, some cost me time, uh -huh. some cost me tears. Right. But I learned great lessons. Mm. And so I, I think when we can get to the place of embracing the whole us, mm. the whole us. Exactly. I love that, Lisa. And I think it's so important for so many powerful women to really absorb this and, and dig into this because if I look at myself a few years ago, I was I was really doing the do, I was creating success, I was in right. build mode, right? And I had so many big dreams and goals and desires, which I still do obviously, but I was creating from a really different place. And when I look back, I was so uncomfortable with my own vulnerability and I was so uncomfortable with all those moments in time that you were talking about and I saw them as weakness. And so what I did, I feel like I put on this masculine shell, like this masculine coat of that, you know, I have to disconnect from my emotions a little bit and we've been brought up to think fear and sadness and guilt are bad and wrong right, and right. we shouldn't be feeling that and who are you to be sad right, right, right. when really I, I came to learn that it's about having a full sensory experience and allowing yourself to dive into those emotions and dive into being feminine 
as right. well. And I think this is one of the keys for women, especially when they learn to unlock their feminine energy. And I've seen you do this over the years as well, right? I yeah. know this is your journey too. Yeah. And and really unlock it and feel totally uncomfortable in right. it, ground in it. I, yeah. I really believe that's where women elevate to that next level. Right. And that for so many women, they're looking to get there, but they're stuck because they can't embrace their feminine. Right, right. You know, um, it requires you to do the work and, and, and I don't want to say do the work and make it ambiguous because mm -hmm. it's not and it should never be um, but to become at peace with every decision you've ever made right. because you made decisions based on what you knew mm -hmm. at that time mm -hmm. um, to recognize that forgiveness isn't about pardoning someone's behavior right. but forgiveness is about opening up and creating more primary real estate mm -hmm. in your body for new love and new experiences and new embracing. Mm -hmm. um, it's about recognizing that failure is not failure um, in the traditional sense, as if something went wrong. That failure is a lesson learned that simply didn't bring about the result you thought you'd have. Right. But it's a lesson learned. It's, it's taking all of those things mm -hmm. and putting them together to go, wait, hold on. I woke up enough. Right. I woke up enough. I woke up. I woke up enough, woman. Mm. I woke up strong enough and gentle enough. It's about being able to live inside of a constant dichotomy. Mm -hmm. That I'm brilliant. I'm brilliant at some things. I'm what I'm brilliant at. I'm brilliant at. Right. And what I'm clueless at. Yeah. I am good at clueless. At. I'm okay. With that. I'm still <laughs> trying to figure that thing out right now. Right. Um, it's about being willing to be that everything for the people around you, because that's what we are as women. Mm -hmm. And it's being willing to have to be nothing mm -hmm. for anyone. And to say, I just need to be for me. Right. It's being able to live in that that duality. Mm -hmm. And and that's not a place you can Google download. Exactly. You don't Google download that. You you have to and you don't just sit back and wait for it to come either. Right. You have to decide. I want to pull that part of my ownership back. Mm. I want to pull that part of my peace of mind back. Mm. I want to I want to make my yes mean more by exercising my no. Right. And recognize as my grandmother says, <clears throat> my grandmother says, baby, she starts every sentence with baby. <laughs> baby, no is a complete sentence. Right. It requires no explanation. Mm. So understanding that that you can you can be powerful and and you can be vulnerable exactly in the same sixty seconds exactly and when you witnessed me embracing my femininity it was the journey to understand that I didn't have to prove anything mm -hmm. defend anything protect anything or hide anything right like those are the four things to write down mm -hmm. there's nothing to prove nothing to protect, nothing to hide, and nothing to defend. Right. And once once I got that, and I said, oh, I woke up enough. Mm. I know. <laughs> Journey, and you don't always get there by yourself. Right. Which is why I'm so committed to doing this work. Exactly. Having these conversations. Exactly. Working together on projects. Right. Because I needed someone to hold my hand. Mm. And I needed someone to see in me what I wasn't seeing in myself. Right. I needed someone to allow me to borrow their lenses. Right. Like, here, put on my yeah. lenses. Because I see you as an uh, amazing woman. Mm. I see you beautiful enough, smart enough. Right. I see you, because I didn't see that. Mm -hmm. I saw this broken little African-American girl from South Central L.A. Right. Who w was born broke who was always going to be broke, right. and along the way got a little broken. Exactly. And didn't quite know how to put the pieces together. Exactly. And then someone let me borrow their lenses. Right. And they held my hand. Right. And I began to believe what they believed first, and then I could adopt it. Exactly. Then I could walk in it. Yeah. And that might be someone watching us now, and I, I honor that sister. Mm -hmm. I honor that sister where you might be at a place where it said, take my hand. Lend me your shades. Right. I need to see. I need to see myself the way you see me, and I know what that looks like, and I know what that feels like, mm. because I had to transform my life into something that was barely 
recognizable. Because in 1994 and 95, there's no way I could see the woman that I am today. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you had that experience. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so beautiful to know that someone mm -hmm. could be watching us. And, and when you dive further into this journey, this conversation, this experience, mm -hmm. who you become in two years, in five years, right. and ten years, is barely recognizable. Right. No, and it's so similar for me. And, and you know what, I, I used to seek out and still do seek out people that could see the greatness in me. And I had to borrow a little bit of that from them yeah. <laughs> in those moments that I couldn't see that. And, and really reflecting back, I had so much trouble being able to receive. And, mm -hmm. and that's something which really kept me in a place yeah. for a very long yeah. time. And I mean receive in every way. I mean receive love, I mean receive money, I mean receive compliments, but it was highlighted by the small things. You know, someone would say, oh, Regan, you know, I love your dress. And I'd immediately go, oh, no, it's this, it's that. Right. Well, you've got great hair. And I'd go, oh, yours too, and deflect it right, right. back. You discount it. Right, you discount absolutely. I couldn't actually sit in that space and go, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I was in the same place to the point where I had to stop saying thank you. Right. Because I would say thank you as a deflector. Exactly. Like, okay, hurry up, move uh -huh. on, someone else. And I had to begin to say the words, I received that. Exactly. I received, because it was more about me really letting it in. Uh -huh. To go, while I could, I I actually could be beautiful. Exactly. I, I could, this, and I begin to say, because you know, we talk about our differences. Mm -hmm. You know, you're beautiful, external and internal. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're 360 beautiful. And the reality is, society for a very long time, they only saw beauty in one particular package. Right. You know, long hair, your complexion, small frame, everything that I wasn't. Mm. Like, I just kind of went, okay, uh, so what do I do? Right. <laughs> and I remember when I first began to own my uniqueness and own mm -hmm. my version of who I was, I would say God made me in a unique, no, God made me as a an unique, unrepeatable miracle. Right. And I don't look like a beauty queen on the runway, but she doesn't get to look like me either. <laughs> right. And I would, I would really embrace that I have a unique beauty. Right. It's beauty. But it's my unique beauty. Right. And I would have to say that, Regan, all the time just mm -hmm. so that I could look in the mirror and I could see my lips mm -hmm. and not tear them apart. Right. See my complexion and not try to, you know, rub it till it got lighter. Like, right. I have to do right. so much mm -hmm. to just sit in my skin and right. be okay with it. Right. And, um, and I, I, I finally learned that it's not in my likeness to someone else that... I finally learned that I didn't have to modify Lisa. Mm -hmm. That she came a hundred percent. She didn't come sixty, right, or forty, right, or eighty. And right. if that's one thing that that I can impart on you, that you're one hundred percent enough. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That with all of your mistakes and all of your choices and all of your lonely moments and all of the things that you're keeping score on, mm -hmm. you still get to have joy. You still get to have abundance. Mm -hmm. You still get to have love. You still get to have this amazing breathtaking life. Right. I get to have one thing. Mm. It's funny because people would look at me and probably say, well, it's easy for you. <laughs> you look like that. And, but that it was, and that must be un uncomfortable. Yeah. And and for so many years, I used to dull myself down. And I used to shrink when I walked into a room because I wanted to be loved and I wanted mm. to fit in and I mm. wanted to be accepted. Mm. And I actually wanted to connect, mm. yeah. especially with women. Yeah. So I would I would put my light down in any way that I could, yeah. any way that I could to fit in you a would, little bit You would more. dim your light. Massively. So I noticed when I really started the journey of falling in love with Regan, who she was and really started having the, the courage and the conviction to stand in who I was regardless. Not only did I ground into myself, but I noticed other women grounding into themselves and I noticed their lights starting to turn on one by one 
And at first I, I didn't realize it was me, but then people started coming up and saying, hey, I wanted to thank you, you know, you gave me permission to do this, permission to do that. I saw you shaved your head and then it gave me permission to do this thing that I've been wanting to do for so long, but I mm -hmm. never gave myself permission to do it. Right, right. And then I realized it kind of circled back around and I was like, none of this is about me. <laughs> None of this is even about me and who am I to stand in my smallness when someone needs me to stand in my greatness right. for their own life to right. go on? Right. How selfish have I been? Right. That your light doesn't belong to no. only you. No. Your light belongs to the person who happened to be in a moment of darkness. Right. And when you give yourself permission to allow your light to shine, uh -huh. in that moment, in that millisecond, you pass their, cross their path. Right. Whether it be through YouTube or Facebook or the grocery store or the cleaners or the airport or the beach, in that moment, mm -hmm. your light illuminated their darkness. Right. And they could truly see mm -hmm. who they've always been meant to be. Right. Because you were generous enough mm -hmm. to recognize your light doesn't belong just to you. Right. Man, when you get that. Right. <laughs> when you get that, you know. But the first, the first rule is before you love me, can you love you? Right. I, I realized that I couldn't love you, support you, encourage you until I fell in love with Lisa. Right. And I couldn't just like Lisa. Yeah. Right? I couldn't like just like I'll Lisa. I'll love her some days. I'll love her on some days because she's going to do some dink on stuff. Right. She's going to get stuck. She's going to be in her righteousness. Mm -hmm. She's going to make a wrong decision. She's going to say yes when she should have said no. Right. She's going to get in a relationship that may not honor her or mm. friendship, business or romantic, right. you know, she's going to do things that humans do. Right. <laughs> I can't just like her and love her on some days that I realize, and I think you got this too, that I had to fall madly, unconditionally in love with her, mm. in love with Lisa. I had to love her on her dark days. Right. I had to love her on her big days. I had to not shrink her giant mm. and not kick out her smallness. Exactly. When, and that's why I love the idea of us playing together. Right. Because I think together we reach, you know, across color lines. Right. Religious lines, geographical lines. Lots um, of lines. Lots of lines. <laughs> lots of lines that shouldn't exist. Right. Right. There are other lines. They're, really. they're, they're, they're mirage. You know, there are stories someone made up. Mm -hmm. There are stories someone made up. Matter of fact, most of our limitations are stories someone made up. Uh -huh. People look like you shouldn't. Right. People come from where you come from shouldn't. Right. You'll never do that because they're, they're, they're limiting beliefs that someone else imposed on us. Right. And then we begin to buy them. Exactly. And then we begin to live into those limiting beliefs like they were our truth. Right. And I'm just like, I'm a disruptor. Right. I'm, I, I'm like, wait a minute. What if I don't buy what I'm sold? <laughs> what if I don't buy what I'm sold? Uh -huh. What if I, like, get a blank sheet of paper mm -hmm. and I write my experience right free of anything else what exactly. that that's why i'm excited yeah i'm super excited and i feel like so much that we've touched on is the superpower which we started out talking yeah. about and it's for me it's almost like this undercurrent it's the undercurrent that sits under the surface that i truly believe every woman has i agree every woman has regardless of who they are where they are what they've done in their life regardless of all of it is there but some people have just disconnected from right, right. they've just forgotten it right. so i think yeah, we should continue the conversation around how do we help these amazing women just remember, remember right. how to tap into that undercurrent so that every area of their life can elevate. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to recognize that like a new car, if you bought a new car, you don't ask, does this car come with the steering wheel? Right. <laughs> you don't ask. You don't ask, does it come with brakes? Yeah. Does you it know? have a door? Does it have a door? You don't ask that. You might ask, does it come with Sirius radio or does right. it come with the, the latest GPS system? Uh -huh. Well, you don't ask about the basics. Right. Your superpower and your superpowers are the basics. Exactly. It's your birthright. Because you're yes. born, that's what you have. Exactly. What happens is, through life experiences, the superpowers get covered up uh -huh. by the yuck. Right. the muck and the junk mm -hmm. and what I love about what we're going to do together is we're going to help women uncover yes. and rediscover remember and remember the superpower exactly now so you're funny. too young for this <laughs> right you're too young but there was this cartoon out uh -huh. um, way back in the day and it was wonder twins okay and it was a boy and a, a brother and a sister uh -huh. and whenever they got in trouble 
I knew what was going to happen. They'd say, Wonder Twin Powers, and they'd go in touch. they go, Wonder Twin Powers, activate. 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 And I knew right. the solution was about to be handled, right? And so I, I, I'm excited about us mm, to that. having our Wonder Twin Powers activate. I'm going right. to try to find it somewhere. Like, right. this, is, this is the years of difference That's between it. us. I'll try to find it somewhere so you can see. And, uh, and they would take on different forms. Amazing. Whatever form was necessary, they take on to get through the moment. And I believe that we can activate our superpower. Mm. And we can get through anything. Yes. And over everything. Right. And go through anything. Exactly. And get to wherever it is we call our bliss. Exactly. Exactly. I'm so excited. <laughs> I know. Me too. Me too. I love you. Oh, I love you too. I do. I love amazing. you. Amazing. I love yes. you. I appreciate yeah. you. You're brilliant. You're amazing. I'm grateful for your journey. Mm. I'm grateful for every hurdle, mm. every high point, every prayer you need to, you need to make, right. every quiet moment you need to take, yes. every form of surrender you need to give. Mm. I'm grateful for that because it forms you into the most beautiful soul mm. that then I get the pleasure of meeting, loving, creating, and designing. Mm. So I'm grateful for you, sweetie. Oh, I received that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes, I love you yes. so much. I love you. I love you so much. I feel like this has been an amazing conversation. And for everyone tuning in, if you've loved this, let us know. Send us a comment below and let us know what was your biggest takeaway? What did you get from this? What What are you committed to changing in your life now that you've had a window into this conversation? And tag people in that really need to hear this and watch this and feel this and breathe this with us and share it if you love it as well because I really know that if we can get other women activating in this way and switching on their lights and doing this right yeah, <laughs> right <laughs> the world will be a bit of place yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like I'm sitting here just taking you in like you know I'm, I'm, I'm not just hearing you I'm feeling what it feels like when it happens right. so please comment Tell us what part of your soul was touched. Tell us what's that, that power you know you want to activate. Mm -hmm. What's that journey that you're ready to take? Make a bold declaration with us. You know, we're your sisters in the journey. Mm -hmm. We're not strangers. We're not distant friends. We're your sisters in the journey. So comment. Please comment. And tell us, you know, you want to if you want to walk with us, does it feel good? And what do you want to get out of the other side? Because uh, we're going to hold hands with us and with you. And make sure we all get there. That you won't get there alone. You don't have to take that journey alone. And you got some sister friends. We're in your corner. We love you. We love appreciate you. So much. you. Yeah, can't wait. Next time, tune in. Stay tuned in. Stay dialed in. And most of all, stay activated. Stay in action. Ciao. Ciao, Bella.